Mary Barton, context the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain The 18th and 19th centuries were a time of great upheaval and modernization in Great Britain. The mass proliferation of steam-powered machines, factories of all sorts, and greater transport links enabled the period known as the Industrial Revolution to take place and completely change the country's economy. British industry and agriculture at the beginning of the 18th century was relatively small-scale and lacked the sophistication of later years. Industries such as textile production were handled on an individual or workshop basis. Spinners, weavers, and dyers worked from home or small workshops, and thousands of different manufacturers operated up and down the country. The small scale of this production was not limited to the textile industry. Coal mining, metal production, and many other heavy, complicated industries were built on a much smaller scale. Developments in technology and new inventions changed the scale of production. This change began in the agricultural world. Steam power harnessed the increased productivity of machines and allowed farmers to produce more food. Over the course of the 18th century, the increased food production lowered the demand for people to work in fields and meant that an increasing number of people lived in cities. The population grew, and the now unemployed agricultural laborers took up jobs in the crowded factories. The sudden shift in this economic system led to waves of unemployment as people transitioned from rural to urban areas. The improvements in technology did not just allow for new machines to be created. The same materials such as metals could be produced to much higher quality. This advancement allowed for the invention of large-scale factory machinery. Higher quality metals meant higher heat tolerances when building engines which meant increased efficiency and the production of even more high quality materials at a lower price. The Industrial Revolution was termed a revolution because of the rapid pace of the development. This rapid pace not only transformed the British economy but forced many poor people from countryside homes into increasingly crowded cities. The characters in Mary Barton worked in the textile industry. This industry had traditionally operated from small-scale or home-based workshops. The invention of the water frame by Richard Arkwright 1732-92 in 1769 changed this. The water frame allowed for cotton to be spun on a single machine rather than the complex, multi-person operation it had one spin. The invention of the spinning jenny by James Hargreaves 1720-78 in 1764 also helped to massively increase the efficiency of textile production. Power looms and other factory devices meant that the traditional weaving process was no longer required. Cheap, light cloth could be produced by large factories and then sold in Britain or around the world. Canals and trains meant that shipping this produce became increasingly easy, while the improvements in shipping meant that British textiles could be exported to other continents. By the 19th century, many factories were operating in British urban centres such as Manchester. Mary Barton takes place in the early to mid-1800s, by which time traditional weaving jobs were less in demand. John Barton is a character in the novel. He has been a weaver his entire life, and takes pride in his work. The factory owners look less kindly on these weavers and see them as extensions of the machines which make production so much more efficient. The Industrial Revolution laid the groundwork for the unemployment and disparity in wealth that the novel portrays. While the Industrial Revolution transformed the British economy and made many factory owners very rich, it left men like John Barton behind. The Chartists' Chartism was a working-class movement that emerged in 19th-century Britain as a reaction against the wealth disparity in the economy and the lack of political representation for working-class men. The movement was born out of the London Working Men's Association led by William Lovett 1800-7 and Francis Place 1771-1854. The two men were racial self-educator advocates for change in society. They drew up a petition in combination with the other members of the association which called for six changes to be made in society, the right to vote for all men, each vote to be secret elections to be held every year, constituencies to be the same size being a member of parliament to be a paid job, and the removal of the requirement that only men who own property could become members of parliament. The petition proved to be very popular among working-class men who recognized that their lack of political representation had a direct impact on their poor working conditions. Over 1.25 million men signed the petition, and in June 1839 it was taken to the House of Commons and presented to the British Parliament. The Chartists' petition was rejected outright by the members of Parliament. The rejection caused civil unrest in places like Newport, South Wales. The Newport Rising of 1839 saw over 10,000 Chartists led by a man named John Frost 1784-1877, rise up in open rebellion against the government, though they were swiftly crushed by the authorities and Frost was charged with treason. The Chartists continued to petition the government. Their 1,842 attempt at another petition was signed by over 3 million people, but it was also rejected by Parliament, and the rejection was again followed by a period of social unrest. Further attempts followed over the ensuing decade, but many of the Chartists could not afford to continue their fight while members became disillusioned and turned to alternative political groups. Chartism was nevertheless one of the first working-class movements in Great Britain and left an important legacy. 
By 1850 Parliament came to the conclusion that reform in the mold of the Chartists' demands was inevitable. Acts were passed in 1867 and 1884 which satisfied some, but not all of the Chartists' demands. Change continued incrementally, and by 1918 five of the six aims had been achieved. The only outstanding demand is the call for a parliamentary election every year which is still not the case in Britain. The Chartists appear in Mary Barton. John Barton is a member of the group and a part of the march in 1839 to present the petition to Parliament. He is a representative of the Manchester Chartists, but he becomes disillusioned with the group when the petition is rejected. Parliament's decision to ignore the mass movement radicalizes John Barton who feels that more extreme action is the only solution to the constant problems that working class men face. The Lancashire dialect Mary Barton is written with a specific dialect in mind, as Elizabeth Gaskell believed that the dialect was an essential method of understanding the plight of the working class poor people in Manchester. Gaskell uses local speech patterns, vocabulary, phrases, and other regional flourishes to make the setting seem more authentic. The Lancashire dialect emerged from the period in which the novel is set. The 18th century drift of the population from the countryside to urban areas and particularly Manchester fostered the creation of an identifiable local dialect which is still heard today. In Mary Barton Gaskell provides translations and insights into the specific form of dialect she uses. Gaskell wrote Mary Barton while she lived in Manchester, and after she became more successful and famous she delivered two lectures on her unique interpretation of the dialect and literature.